It's the show that magicians around the globe don't want you to see. The Masked Magician is back, out of hiding, daring to expose the world's most highly guarded secrets. You'll find out how they perform amazing appearances, death-defying escapes, baffling levitations, astounding vanishes, mind-blowing sleight of hand, and impossible illusions. No magician is too famous. No trick too big. No secret too sacred. The magician's code will be forever broken on magic's biggest secrets finally revealed. magician pulls back the curtain and exposes the secrets to crushing a beautiful woman with a steel plunger and making her vanish while suspended in midair floating through a solid steel frame without wires plus penetrating a plate glass window without shattering it to pieces and much more, right now on Magic's Biggest Secrets Finally Revealed. This corrugated metal enclosure will be the site of the magician's first illusion tonight. As we can see, the enclosure is completely empty and free from magical gimmicks. Inside is an empty steel frame. Before the magician is a steel panel. It's also empty, solid, and free from gimmicks. Attached are these thick straps. When straps are securely attached to something, you know they'll be securely strapping someone. And here's that special someone now. The magician's beautiful assistant. She steps up onto the panel so that we can get a better look at her latest outfit. It's a nice one. Next, she gets down onto the panel and prepares to recline. The magician calls in two male assistants to help him. Apparently, she's more than he can handle. The assistants strap the girl to the panel, just as I suspected. At least she's dressed for it. Remember, there are no camera tricks involved. The magician checks the strap and does some conjuring while he's at it. He calls in two more assistants, and the four men lift the panel and carry it into the metal enclosure. They position the panel within the empty steel frame and lock it in place. We can see how tightly the girl is strapped down. He doesn't want her to get away. Next, the assistants remove the metal braces so that we have a clear view of the girl within the metal enclosure. Watch. The magician gives us another look at the girl, and for this, I'm grateful. He conjures a cloud of smoke, a flash. She's gone. The girl and the steel panel have vanished in an instant. But where did she go? We'll just have to wait for the magician to show us how it's done. So how did the magician make his lovely assistant vanish while suspended in midair? It's not a camera trick. Here are the secrets. The first secret is in the sheet metal enclosure. Concealed in the back wall is a secret panel, behind which is a stagehand. We'll learn more about his role later. When the illusion begins, the girl is strapped to the metal panel. The magician and his assistants take great care to strap the girl securely so she can't go anywhere. Next, the panel is moved to the metal framework inside the enclosure. The framework contains several secrets. 
First off, the straps are real and it's critical to the girl's safety that they are securely fastened. They're padded for her comfort. But we'll get to that in a minute. When the assistants are securing the panel to the frame, what you don't notice is that they're releasing secret latches positioned in the corners of the frame. See? The latches flip out of the way. During the performance, the magician appears to conjure a puff of smoke and an explosion, and the girl is gone. But where did she go? Remember the stage hand hidden behind this secret panel? At the precise moment the explosion goes off, the stagehand opens his window and releases a lever on the frame that rotates the panel and the girl, concealing her from view. Now she is being supported by the padded straps, which protect her from falling to the floor below. The entire mechanism is designed so that this one tiny lever is all the stagehand needs to release in order to make the entire panel flip and conceal the girl. These safety spring locks are built into the frame to stop the panel after precisely one half rotation. So if the girl is strapped to the back of the solid panel, how can we see through the frame to the sheet metal wall? The secret here is that there is a mirror attached to the back side of the panel. When the panel rotates to conceal the girl, the side with the mirror is exposed and reflects the ceiling of the enclosure. The girl appears to have vanished, but we're actually seeing a reflection of the metal ceiling in the mirror. This is one trick that really is done with smoke and mirrors. Next, the masked magician will perform a trick that street magicians have used to mystify unsuspecting victims who end up believing in freakish powers. He'll use a deck of cards and an assistant as his random volunteer. He begins removing the cards a few at a time telling the girl to say stop whenever she wants. And she does. The card that remains at the top of the stack is offered for her inspection. The magician turns his back so we can get a better look at the card and the girl. King of clubs. He asks her to hold the card tightly to her chest. Lucky card. Then he shows her an ordinary lighter. That's a real flame. So remember, don't try this at home. Ouch! That's what happens when you play with fire. See? A blister. Painful. There it is, as if we needed a better look. Next, he tells the girl to concentrate on her card, promising to reveal it with his freaky powers. Looks like she wants him to prove it. Again, he takes the lighter and pinches the flame. Ouch! I told him it was hot. But what's this? Burned into his flesh are a K and a club for the king of clubs. Freaky, isn't it? But I bet he's burning to tell us the secret. So, how did the magician reveal that he knew the chosen card by branding the image in his flesh? Here are the secrets. Let's start with the cards. The magician knew which card the girl would choose all along, because before the trick began, he marked the location of the king of clubs with his little finger. He removes a few cards, and when the girl tells him to stop, he removes one final stack. The card on top of the remaining pile is the one he offers to the girl. This is how he makes sure she chooses the king. The magician knows which card she'll choose, but how does he brand the symbols into his skin? The secret here is concealed within the lighter. Embossed into the sides of the lighter are stencils, representing three values on one side and three suits on the other. The small circle on the bottom is the stencil the magician uses to convince us that he's caused a blister with the lighter. He turns his back as the volunteer shows her card, and at the same time, he's gripping the bottom of the lighter tightly. The circle leaves a temporary impression on his thumb that looks like a blister. He pretends to burn his thumb and shows us the phony blister to prove it. Next, he tells the girl to think of her card and promises her he can guess what it is. He's really just stalling as he squeezes his thumb and forefinger against the stencils for the club 
and the king. This tight pressure will leave the appropriate markings in his flesh. When he pretends to burn himself the second time, he can reveal the impressions which have been secretly left by the stencils. And now, you know the secrets. For his next illusion, the magician will employ this curious looking device that has a long plunger on one end. Resting on a thin table, this large box is shown to be completely empty. Both the front and back sides are open so we can see everything. The magician calls in one of his beautiful assistants. Looking at her costume, we can almost see everything. He wants us to take a good look at the girl because she's about to get inside that box. A perfect fit, just like her costume. The magician calls in his other assistants and the fun begins. They draw shades in the back and the front of the box and secure them to the face of the plunger. The line drawing on the front is a fair depiction of the girl inside with a little artistic license here and there. We get the idea. He hands the girl a red silk handkerchief as a lovely parting gift. Whenever a girl gets into a magical box, we can assume something is about to happen to her. As she continues to wave bye-bye, the magician backs up to the end of the plunger. Without warning, he pushes the plunger forward, presumably crushing everything in its path. But the girl is still waving. There's barely enough room for her inside. She pulls the handkerchief into the box, and the magician pushes the plunger all the way forward completely crushing the girl. As we can see, there is nothing left inside the box except for the long plunger. The girl has been completely flattened. Her lovely co-workers don't seem to mind. Caddy. The magician withdraws the plunger, and we can see that nothing untoward has happened to the line drawing of the girl. But will her amazing lines fare so well? The assistants rotate the box so we can see that the shade and back has also been restored to its original condition. And now to get a look inside. He gives a magical wave and commands one of the assistants to open the shade. There's the girl, and she's not the least bit flattened. Another incredible illusion that demands a credible explanation. So how did the magician crush his assistant flat as a pancake? As usual, the secrets are inside the box. The first secret lies deep within the base. It's actually much deeper than it appears. Closer inspection reveals a trap door in the false bottom and a secret compartment below that is nearly a foot deep. See? Lots of room to store a girl who is physically fit. The left side of the box isn't solid. It's made of spandex, concealing another hiding place. When the illusion begins, the girl climbs into the box and the shade is drawn. But with the shade open, we can see how she quickly opens the trap door and slides her legs into the compartment in the base. She presses her back against the spandex, which allows her torso to hide in the side. Snug as a bug. The magician gives her a handkerchief to wave through a hole in the top of the box. This creates the illusion that she is still relaxing in the center of the box. But without the shade, we can see that she is already in her hiding spot by the time the handkerchief is placed into her grip. She pulls it down seconds before the magician drives the plunger all the way into the box, making it appear that she has been completely crushed. Without the shade, we can see that the plunger can slide all the way in without harming her, even though it is pressing tightly against her. 
The secret here is that the face of the plunger is also made of spandex. When it presses against her, it's like she's being crushed between two soft pillows. Nice. All that's left to complete the illusion is to reverse the action. The plunger is withdrawn, and the girl immediately climbs back out of the base. She replaces the false bottom and gets ready for the moment of her big reveal. And that's how to put a crush on a girl without breaking her heart. Now for a trick that involves almost no preparation or special props. All you need is a volunteer, a pad of sticky notes, and a pen. The magician tells his volunteer to think of an object to sketch on the pad. He tells her that he'll be able to duplicate the drawing magically, no matter what she chooses. He hands her the pen and pad and tells her to draw. He even turns around so he can't see and places his hands behind his back. Even though this is his assistant, she's not in on the trick, so this trick will work with any random volunteer. Look at that, a heart, how sweet. She folds the drawing as instructed and places it in the magician's hand. Now, he convinces her that his magical powers of ESP are about to go to work and tells her to concentrate on her drawing. He turns around and attempts to read her mind. Oh, if only he could. He rubs the sticky note and turns around when he thinks he has the answer. He hands her back the note, still folded, and takes the pad and pen. He'll now attempt to draw the same object she's drawn just by reading her mind. Let's see how good he really is. He asks her to open her drawing and she reveals the heart. He then turns the pad around to show what he's drawn. How about that? A perfect match. So, did the masked magician really read the innocent girl's mind? Of course not. There's a secret. He asks the girl to draw a picture on the pad of sticky notes. The pad is one of the secrets to this trick. The sticky backing is essential. When the magician turns his back, the volunteer places her folded sketch into his hand. What you didn't see was a blank folded sticky note hidden in his other hand. When the magician turns around to tell the volunteer to concentrate on the object she drew, he sticks her drawing to the column behind him. He turns around to face the column, being careful to hide the sticky note from her view. In his hands, he holds the folded blank note which the volunteer will assume is her drawing. While she's busy concentrating on her object, he's sneaking a look at her sketch. Once he's memorized it, he turns around and secretly removes the note. He folds it back up and exchanges it for the pad and pen. He duplicates the object he saw in her sketch and then reveals it to her. Whether it's a simple heart or a number or letter, it's easy to recreate when you know the secret. For his next illusion tonight, the magician will demonstrate the magical powers of his latest invention, this high-tech machine that turns antimatter into matter. Not that it matters. Just keep an eye on what he can do with it. On the front of the machine is a control panel. The flashing lights indicate that the materialization process is ready to begin. He sets a couple of switches to delay the experiment and offers us an exclusive look inside. It's empty, except for a few more panels of lights which indicate the machine is now at full power. We're ready to begin. Now for the master switch. A flash of light a surge of electricity, and a skeleton appears inside the machine. Somewhere, a biology class is missing its mascot. This illusion defies all the laws of science. He flips the switch again, 
and now the skeleton has taken the shape of the female form. I'd say it was impossible if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. The magician makes an adjustment and throws the switch one more time. Keep your eye on the humanoid. It's now transformed into a beautiful woman. She's alive. Ah, uh, the heck with science. I love this trick. But is she real? An explosion, and the gorgeous girl emerges from the machine, fully formed and fully functional. Nice job, masked man. Now make one more for me. So, how did the masked magician create a living doll in his futuristic machine? Here are the secrets. When the illusion begins, the magician shows us the machine, which is basically a large box dressed up with flashing lights and phony switches. These lights and switches are just Hollywood props. They don't do anything other than blink and look really cool. The real secrets are hidden inside the box. When we look through the opening, it appears that we can see all the way to the end of a long hallway. What we don't know is that the hallway contains a large sheet of glass that is on a 45 degree angle to the front of the box. When light shines on the space behind the glass, we see through it to the empty hallway. But how does the cheap skeleton magically appear? Hidden just to the right of the glass is a secret compartment. When the light shines into the compartment, whatever is inside is reflected onto the glass. In this case, the girl. There is another secret room at the end of this hallway. Inside are another girl and the plastic skeleton. When the hallway goes dark and the outside lights flash, this girl wheels the skeleton out of hiding and behind the sheet of glass. Next, the lights come up in the hallway, exactly as the lights in the duplicate empty compartment are going down. Now the skeleton becomes visible through the glass and the reflection of the empty hallway goes away. Next, we see the skeleton morph into a humanoid. Here's how. When the lights in the empty compartment are dimmed, a third girl places a mannequin inside and positions it precisely in the right spot. When the lights in the skeleton's hallway fade simultaneously with the lights in the mannequin's compartment, the reflection on the glass makes it look like the scary skeleton is transforming into the scary humanoid. It's really just the glass acting as a mirror. Now that the end of the hallway is dark, the skeleton is removed and the gorgeous blonde steps into its place. When the magician pretends to activate the machine again, the lights outside flash and the lights inside the compartment go down as the lights in the hall go up, making it appear that the humanoid is turning into the lovely lady. That's really her at the end of the hall, standing behind the glass. But how does she get from behind the glass to the opening of the machine? The secret here is that the glass is hinged along one side. When the magician cues the small explosion, the smoke obscures the hallway long enough for a hidden stagehand to pull a cable, which opens the glass and allows the girl to walk straight out of the machine. What a walk. This trick is a complex choreography of lights, smoke, and mirrors. And now you know how it's done. Next, the magician will astound us with some sleight of hand. But wait, his shoelace is untied. Not a good look for such a sharp-dressed man, and not very safe. Wouldn't want him to trip and break his mask. He gives his shoe a shake, then a few more for good measure. He's either got ants in his pants or is inventing a new dance move. Or maybe he's using some magic. Let's watch. How about that? His shoelace has miraculously knotted itself. I'm fit to be tied. So, how did the magician make his shoelace tie itself by magic? Here are the secrets. First off, his shoelace is really tied the whole time. The next secret is in this retractable key ring. A duplicate untied shoelace is attached to the end of the string where the keys would normally be fastened. The magician takes the other end and secretly clips it to his belt. The string, seen here, runs inside his pant leg so that the untied lace sticks out while the tied lace is concealed by his pants. 
When the magician shakes his foot to make it look like he is tying the lace magically, all he's really doing is allowing the key ring to retract, pulling the untied lace up into his pants. See it go? Here it is again in slow motion. He presses the release and the lace shoots up inside his pants. Not so tricky when you know the secrets. This large steel frame will play a featured role in the magician's next mind-blowing illusion. So will his assistants. Here he is now, coming in from the mysterious fog. And here come the girls. And there goes the magician, floating straight up off the floor. The assistants return with the solid steel frame and pass it completely around the magician proving that he's not supported from above, below, or anywhere. He's simply floating in midair. Let's see that again. Here's the frame, and there it goes, proving once and for all that it's not done with wires. Yet the magician continues to rise. And now, he commands himself to lower, just in time to meet the ladies. How very smooth. So how did the magician make himself levitate and prove that there are no wires by having the steel frame passed around him from every direction? Here are the secrets. The first secret is in the wall of corrugated metal. Hidden within the seemingly random patchwork of metal sheets is a flexible rubber panel with a slit down the middle. Behind the wall is a solid steel arm that's attached to this hefty forklift. While the beautiful assistants enter and distract our attention, the forklift operator is driving forward, pushing the arm through the slit panel that's directly behind the magician. There it goes. Attached to the front of the arm is a plate containing a powerful electromagnet. The next secret is this harness that is concealed beneath the magician's costume. On the back is another heavy-duty metal plate that rests over the small of his back. When the mechanical arm comes in behind the magician, the forklift operator flips this switch, causing the electromagnet to securely grab onto the plate. When the magician appears to be magically rising off of the floor, he's really getting a lift from the forklift operator. But if he's attached to the metal arm, how do the assistants pass the large solid frame around him? It certainly appears that he's not being supported from any direction. The secret here is in the frame. It is solid metal, except for this small section on one side that's foam rubber, painted to look like metal. The foam bends and snaps back into place once the arm has passed through. When the first two girls move the frame toward the magician, they slow down slightly to hand it off to the other girls. Without the magician in place, we see that slowing the movement allows them to make sure the arm clears the foam rubber section. See it clear, then snap back. Next, when the assistants push the frame around the magician to prove there's nothing on either side of him, they're really just pushing it from the front to the back wall, completely avoiding the support. From this angle, we can see that there is plenty of room on either side of the support arm. Next, the forklift operator gently lowers the magician back to the floor, and the illusion is complete. Floating with no strings attached is easy when you know the secret. Next, the magician has a classic trick using this red silk handkerchief. 
Note that there's nothing in his hand. The magician takes the handkerchief and, if you'll pardon the expression, stuffs it into the top of his closed fist. Now watch. When he pulls the red handkerchief out of the bottom, it's yellow. He continues to stuff the red handkerchief into his fist, and out comes more yellow. Now for the rest of it. It's completely changed color and his hand is empty. Let's see that again. He stuffs the yellow handkerchief into his empty hand, just as before. This time when he pulls it out, it's red. See? Red. Yellow. Yellow goes in, red comes out. All the way out, and his hand is empty. The perfect trick. Okay, so how did the magician make the silk handkerchief change colors just by passing it through his empty hand? Here are the secrets. When the trick begins, the magician shows us an ordinary red handkerchief. What we don't see is this little flesh-colored tube that's concealed in his other hand and contains the yellow handkerchief and nothing else. But how does he make the red go in and the yellow come out. Before the trick began, the magician stuffed the yellow handkerchief into the tube. Then he inserts the middle finger of his right hand into the tube in order to conceal it in his palm. The tube is hidden in his closed right fist as he shows us the red handkerchief. He passes the red handkerchief through his empty left hand a few times to show it empty then secretly transfers the tube from his right to his left. It appears that he's stuffing the red handkerchief into his left hand, but it's really going into the tube. See? The red goes into the top half, pushing the yellow out of the bottom. This creates the illusion that the handkerchief is changing color. Here we can see that he's simply pulling the yellow out of the tube as the red goes in. Ah, but how does he show us that his hand is empty? When he finishes stuffing the red handkerchief into his left fist, he secretly inserts his finger into the tube again and conceals it in his right hand. Once he removes the yellow, his left hand is empty for all to see. Now you know the secret to one of Magic's classic tricks. The magician will use this empty office in the abandoned warehouse to duplicate an illusion made popular on TV by street magicians. He examines the glass in the office window. It's solid. No chips, breaks, cracks, or imperfections of any kind. In fact, it's the cleanest thing in this dusty joint. Next, he finds a discarded sheet of paper and calls in his lovely assistants to lend a hand. As always, he makes sure we get a good look at the girls. Next, he tells them what he wants them to do with the paper sheet. He places it in front of the window and indicates the exact spot where they should hold it. Meanwhile, the magician prepares for his big moment. He steps into the office and closes the door. While the girls work their magic outside the window, the magician will work his magic on the inside. See what I mean? Let's hope he's got more planned than this mime routine. Satisfied that the glass is solid, he instructs the girls to raise the paper. The magician climbs up behind the paper so we can see him one last time behind the solid pane of glass. Now watch.
Suddenly, a finger bursts through the paper sheet. This is either a very convincing illusion, or the magician is going to have to pay for a broken window. That's his hand, all right. We can see both of the girl's hands on the paper, so they're not part of the deception. He tears the paper, and now his foot emerges through the glass. Now his whole body. But that glass was one solid piece. It still is. Absolutely incredible. This is one illusion that begs for an explanation. We just saw the masked magician penetrate a solid glass window without breaking it, just like certain famous street magicians have done to the amazement of millions of TV viewers. So how did he do it? Here are the secrets. Before he walks through the glass, the magician walks into the office. What we don't see is that hidden behind the wall are two of his assistants ready to make the magic happen. The magician shows us the glass and proves that it's solid. At least, this part of it is. The window is actually much larger than it appears from the front. The glass has a solid section on top and a cutout section in the lower half that is hidden by the wall. Attached to the bottom of the glass are two handles. Finally, the glass is fitted into a concealed guide rail that runs from the top of the window down to the floor. Once the solid part of the glass is covered by the paper, the assistants hidden behind the wall use the handles to raise the entire pane so that the cutout is above the window frame. With the paper covering the window, we don't see the glass moving or the large hole that is rising into place. Here it is from behind without the paper covering the glass. But if the glass moves, why doesn't the open sticker on the upper left corner of the window move? Here's the secret. From the front, it looks like a sticker on the glass. From the back, we see that it's a solid sign, cleverly attached to the window frame and not the glass. It stays put as the glass moves in front of it. This simple sign adds authenticity and makes the illusion more convincing. With the cutout raised behind the paper, the magician carefully punctures a hole with his finger. At this point, a larger hole would reveal the cutout in the glass and give away the trick. To ensure the hole doesn't open too wide, the magician uses a sharp screw to pierce the paper. How's that for high tech? He saws the paper with the screw and slides his body through the opening, careful not to expose the cutout behind him. Here it is from inside the room. The paper is torn and the magician forces his way through the cutout in the window. The second he is through, the hidden assistants quickly slide the glass back into place. The paper is removed and the solid glass is revealed. Nice job, girls. You made him look good again. And now you know his secret. Next time, the Masked Magician returns to reveal more of magic's biggest secrets. Missed your favourite show on ITV4? You can now catch it on ITV4 Plus One, Sky Channel 180 and Freesat Channel 118 an hour later.